That's, and that's a challenge, you know, we think about the baby who refuses the breast as being really challenging, but you know, the mom who can't get a break because her baby won't take anything else. That's a huge challenge. Yeah. You lose that privilege of, you know, if you do have someone to help you at night, you can't just get them up and say, Hey, can you, you know, take the shift tonight out so I can get asleep and then we can go back to how we normally do tomorrow. Cause So today we are here with Andrea and she's going to talk to us a little bit about breastfeeding and this new cool resource that is for moms. It's not just breastfeeding, but it's a little bit about mental health. And in the past, I've kind of talked about how important it is um, and how everybody's mental health is different after birth, during being a mom, or just in general as a woman, like it's, it's so back and forth, honestly. I know my own experience has been up and down (laughs) and it, uh, there's never a day that I, I really know how my next week it's going to go, whether it's going to be, you know, I'm going to be great. This is, I feel fulfilled. I feel happy. Um, or, you know, it's going to be one of those weeks where, man, these days are just way too long. I need a nap and I need a time to myself. So I, I thought it would be really cool to bring her on. And if you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit, bit about yourself and what you do, that'd be great. Okay. Um, I am, well, I'm a registered nurse. That's how my uh, journey started. Um, I've been a registered nurse for 40 years now, um, almost 40. And in that entire time, I've always taken care of expectant and new families. I've you know, been a labor delivery nurse, a postpartum nurse. Um, I did childbirth education for many years, did some antepartum work. And then Uh, let's see how many years is it 28 years ago I became a lactation consultant and I'm an IBCLC that means international board certified lactation consultant and that's considered like the gold standard for certification Um, and I worked in a hospital for the first 24 years of my career and helped them get their baby friendly designation which has to do with breastfeeding support um, and after I did that, I was kind of like, what next? You know, what, <laughs> what challenge do I want? Um, I was the coordinator at the hospital of the lactation program. And literally within a week of us getting our baby friendly designation, I stepped down um, because I kind of didn't want those responsibilities anymore. Um, and then I started a blog about breastfeeding. Um, it was called Breastfeeding Confidential. And I worked on that for several years and wrote articles about breastfeeding, had a Facebook group, um, did online consults, created some courses, some digital products. Um, And that's what I was doing when I was approached by a company called Nivana. It's spelled N-I-I-V-A-N-A. And they were in the process of creating a web-based app that would serve new mothers and their their with their launch they wanted to offer lactation support and mental health support um and i just as soon as i heard what they wanted to do i wanted to be involved because i feel like breastfeeding is so incredibly important and i feel like we do a really good job of telling moms how important it is and how they should do it and i feel like we do a really poor job of supporting them so they can meet, you know, the the goals that they have personally, and the recommendation by the American Academy of Pediatrics for breastfeeding exclusively for the first six months and continued breastfeeding for at least a year. Um, I just I feel like we don't give them that support, and it's so frustrating for them because they're struggling, um, and they they've been told very clearly how important it is and and what a difference it makes, and then you know we don't give them the support to to meet those goals. Yeah. I feel like I've uh, experienced that firsthand. One of my, you know, in the hospital was the most, that's when everybody was focused on the breastfeeding the most. And then you get out of the hospital and they're like, here's a resource that you can contact. And in my local area, they actually shut it down. And so after that, I was like, I guess I'll figure it out. <laughs> and, and there are some places where, you know, I live in an area I live in, um, well, I live near Boulder, Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have tons of, of 
support groups and lactation consultants and things like that. But then, you know, there are areas of the country where moms have nothing within driving distance. So the consults are going to be virtual. They're going to be, you know, through mm -hmm. a, a HIPAA compliant Zoom. Um, and the really amazing thing is we're going to be available 24 hours a day for lactation services. So if a mom is struggling, you know, she's gotten home yeah. from the hospital, and this is a really common scenario. She's got <laughs> in the hospital, breastfeeding is going great in the hospital. She's like, I've got this. And then her milk comes in and her breasts get huge and hard. And the baby's like, what do you expect me to do with those? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, inevitably it happens at two in the morning. A mom will be able to get onto her phone, her computer, her iPad, whatever, and, and get help immediately. And I think that that is just so, it's gonna make such a difference for moms. And then we're also gonna have um, mental health services because we know that when moms struggle with breastfeeding, that can affect their mental health. And moms who are struggling with mental health, we know they struggle more with breastfeeding. So those are gonna be the initial um, services. Mm -hmm. As we you know, expand, we hope to bring on additional services. Um, but it's not just going to be um, appointments. We're also going to have um, classes. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a membership-based um, uh, service, I guess. And so people that have the premier membership will have access to pre-recorded classes, live groups, um, articles, short video um, videos for information and tips and things like that. There's also going to be for lactation services um, a monitor 24 hours chat feature. So if a mom, you know, say it's two in the morning or whatever, she just has a quick question, she can jump on there and get an answer from an IBCLC. So I'm I'm really really excited about this and just feel like it's going to make such an incredible difference for moms. Honestly, I can already imagine. Um, I'm I, I'm part of quite a few mom groups. Um, and, you know, a few group chats and breastfeeding has been one of our, as a collective, I feel the biggest struggles. And I have girls who are, you know, messaging in the middle of the night, right when you're saying that we experience these issues, because that that's right when it happens or, or in my, in, in my personal experience, uh, I was in the middle of Target because I was not prepared for my baby <laughs> at all. My first, and my milk came in and I was like, what do I do with these things? <laughs> <laughs> like he and he was already having issues so trying to get him to latch after that was terrible and you know I didn't have anybody that was like here you go even my mom because my mom was with me but she didn't breastfeed mm -hmm. she she decided that that wasn't for her and I mean it was 20 something plus years ago when I had my son and versus when she'd had me <laughs> so it was a little fuzzy for her yeah and there, there's so much confusion and there's there's not an easy access resource like that um is there going to be any kind of community feature i know you said there was a chat um i'm glad you brought that up yes we're going to have um forums i mean we're going to have the groups mm -hmm. so you know moms can um and that'll again it's all going to be online um so moms can you know interact with other moms in the groups but we're also going to have a moderated forum so you know, there will be uh, IBCLCs and mental health therapists monitoring the forum to ensure that there's accurate information. Because the reason that I had, when I had my blog, the reason I started a Facebook group was I joined a lot of breastfeeding Facebook groups. And there was a lot of misinformation. And, you know, the, the administrators wouldn't always um, ensure that, you know, that things were corrected mm -hmm. because a lot of times they weren't, you know, IBCLCs or lactation consultants of any kind. And uh, once they, I, you know, I responded to somebody's question and I said, you know, and I'm an IBCLC and they removed my comment and they said, because we're unable to verify whether you really are an IBCLC, we don't let people, you know, so there, you know, yeah. I agree these, these like really poor advice and sometimes it was dangerous um, some of the things that were shared and that was why I started the Facebook group is because I wanted to make sure that there was a place that moms could go to get accurate information 
Um, and so that's why, you know, that's why it's important to us that the forums are moderated by professionals. I mean, we, we want to foster that sense of community, but we also want to make sure that information is accurate and, and safe. So I'm, I'm assuming that they're going to be pretty, they're going to be responding as well to any questions that might be in the forums and, yeah. and participating pretty actively. Yes. Yep. Okay, that, that, that to me is, is pretty neat, you know, having experts right there on board, like, even if you don't want to privately chat, you know, some other mom has answered the, you know, asked the question, you might not want to ask, and they have the response from, you know, directly from an IBCL, IB, IBCLC, IBCLC, okay, <laughs> and they have the response directly from an expert, and, and it's very reassuring, and I know we touched on, you know, kind of the, the latching and the actual learning getting your baby to breastfeed but y'all are also going to cover other aspects of breastfe breastfeeding too so like how to maybe help with your milk supply or you know if you have an oversupply I know one of the moms that I've talked to actually had an oversupply and she said it was just as painful as having an undersupply so it can create you know it creates just a whole different set of problems um, but they are indeed problems um, so I mean we're going to address things in the, the classes that we're going to offer, mm -hmm. our initial offerings are going to be preparing for breastfeeding, just the things to do and know what to expect in those early weeks, um, preparing and managing going back to work, um, pumping, there's going to be a pumping class, and then there's also going to be a class on milk supply. But the lactation consultants can, can handle almost any issue mm -hmm. that a mom has, whether it be low supply, oversupply, um, sore nipples, engorgement, uh, baby with reflux, uh, multiples, I mean, pretty much any, anything, you know, before, I would say that before COVID, we felt like there was just a very limited number of things that could be handled with a um, virtual console. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID hit, we had to start thinking outside the box. Yeah. Mom still needed help with breastfeeding. You know, their breastfeeding problems didn't go away when, when we were in lockdown and, and things like that. And so as I interviewed lactation consultants, I could see that, you know, that our, our belief in the possibilities of what can be handled have just greatly expanded because we've had to think, okay, how can I solve this problem when I can't do hands-on? So... I think that's, um, there's, there's not a lot that we can't do. I think, it, I think this is that, you know, solving that problem has led to this really cool thing. Um, so this is still in the works, like it's not launched, right? It is not launched. Um, mm -hmm. We were supposed to launch, but we, you know, as often happens with these things, we've had some delays with the software. Um, our, we're hoping for June. We're, we're hoping okay. to get the, the product, um, in a couple weeks here, and then we'll start testing it internally. Um, and then we are hoping to be able to launch in June. And so you said this is a membership type platform. Is there gonna be a free level or is it all paid? There, there is a free level um, and there will be certain, you know, benefits with that. Mm -hmm. And the mayor members will have access to everything. You know, mm -hmm. they'll have access to all the the classes will be free, the groups will be free. Um, there will be a charge for any appointments with mm -hmm. you know, um, the IBCLCs or the mental health therapists. Um, and the, the, pay, the fee structure was, is something that we're still deciding on whether premier members will get discounts on the consults or whether it'll be the same. But you don't have to be a premier member to be able to get a, an appointment you know and for mm -hmm. some of the like some of our competitors you you have to be a member to be able to interact with the professionals the chat also is a feature of the uh premier membership so somebody that's a premier member will have access to the 24-hour chat function okay that's pretty cool and another um, thing that we're doing that i think is really cool is um, the, the lactation consults will mm -hmm. be, if the mother desires, will be recorded so that she can go back and watch it again. Because, you know, and I, this was my idea because back when I did lactation consults in person, 
sometimes moms would come in, you know, with a support person and they would video it. They would be like, I want to be able to watch this later. And I thought, that's a great idea because, they, you know, we give them so much information um, and, you know, they'll get a, a written plan, but it's just sometimes, especially like, well, position the baby yeah. like that if you can actually watch it. So that's something that I'm excited about as well. I think that'll make a big difference. Uh, you know, I, when I was having had my first, I actually just brought my husband in um, for pretty much any appointment I went to, even when I was pregnant, because everything, I always felt it was so overwhelming. So when we got out, I was like, what <laughs> did they even tell me? And he's like, this is what happened. This is it. And I mean, you can't always bring your husband to everything. You, you know, you can't always bring a friend. So I think the recording is, is going to be a huge benefit for anybody who, who uses the resource for yeah. sure. So I know you said uh, that, you know, you kind of got started by being an RN and then this is kind of how your whole journey has transformed. Um, I'm know when you said that you had gotten certification for that hospital and then you're like well what's next and this is your your what's next really after your blog and everything yeah this and this kind of came out of I mean I wasn't expecting this at all um and it's funny because I had been doing some freelance writing and that's how they found me they found me on LinkedIn um mm -hmm. and they were looking for somebody that could create some content um and and they said and and maybe more and I was actually phasing out the freelance writing at that <laughs> point. And I almost didn't reply. <laughs> and then I was like, and, and maybe more. And that I was like, I wonder, you know, cause they said it was a, a site for mothers. And, and I was like, eh, I'll, just, I'll just check it out. And I had a um, conversation with our CEO, uh, Kristen Williams. And we talked for about 45 minutes, an hour. And by the end of that time, I was like, I absolutely want to be involved in this. So it was, um, it was a, a pretty drastic pivot um, <laughs> from what I was doing, but I just knew that, that, I mean, my whole thing has always been, I want to support breastfeeding mothers mm -hmm. and I want to support, you know, as many as I can so that they can meet their goals. Um, nothing makes me sadder than when a mother says, you know, she was not successful with breastfeeding. And personally, I don't use those words. I don't use success or failure when it comes to breastfeeding. Um, I, I refer to breastfeeding plans and I say plans are flexible. Plans can change. You know, it's not a success or failure type of thing. It's just, you know, we, we change the plan. Um, and I, you know, it just makes me so sad when, when they say, you know, you can tell they didn't have a good experience. So I feel like this, this project is just going to go such a long way. I, you know, I don't like to be dramatic, but I really feel like it's going to be transformational for the, the support of breastfeeding mothers. I think so. As long as, uh, you know, the word gets out as, as quickly and to that broad spectrum of moms, because I think that's another aspect of making sure that the resources are available. Um, you Sometimes we just don't know. Yeah, and that actually brings up an important point. Um, so lactation consultants, and it's just gonna be in the US. It's, it's gonna be a service available um, for the United States, but lactation consultants can um, practice across state lines, um, you know, online as well. Mental health therapists have to be licensed in the state where they're practicing. And for that reason, we're starting out for mental health services only in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping to partner with some hospitals there, and then we'll expand from there. But the mental health services are not going to be available to everybody in every state initially, just because that's, that's not something that's practical for us to do to launch. Yeah, I could see because you'd have to connect with everybody. Um, you'd have to find people. You'd have to have the time to onboard them into your program. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, we'd have to have at least one therapist in every state. And we're not going to have that kind of traffic initially. Um, so that's one thing that's important to know is that, it, you know, we're starting out in Pennsylvania with mental health. But I mean, the goal is still there. Um, so since it's not launched yet, is there a way that is, is there a wait list that people can sign up for or socials yeah, that they actually, can follow? We do have a site mm -hmm. and it's 
nivana.com. And that again, that's N like in Nancy, I, I, V like in Victor, A, N, A. Um, dot com and that does talk about you know the different services and there is a wait list that you can sign up for so that you'll get notified as soon as we launch um, and there's going to be a, a newsletter that we're going to send mm -hmm. out so that also sign people up for that so I definitely encourage people to check that out <laughs> I think um, I'm going to send it to all my friends because this has been their huge thing lately um, is the breastfeeding uh, I think, oh, I think there's at least a picture once per day that we send a bag of milk <laughs> in our group chat. <laughs> say, I made it. I've got an ounce. And then we got another mom who's got five and we're like three. We're like, yes, <laughs> it's all wins. We're all here. I love that. Do you miss uh, the community aspect of, you know, doing your own, own Facebook group or your own blog or anything? Um, well, the, the answer is yes and no. I, I, <laughs> The community aspect. And when you say that, well, actually what I think of is when I worked in the hospital, I started a breastfeeding support group, a weekly breastfeeding support group. And at, at its most popular, we would have 35, 45, 40, 35 to 40 moms come. Um, and I really loved that energy. I, you know, the moms would come and they'd weigh their babies and they, you know, there was a lactation consultant there that they could ask questions and then they'd you know, hang out with each other. Um, and I loved that. Um, and I miss that. That's one thing that I, I do miss. I feel like with the blog and the Facebook group, um, I just feel like I was feeling really kind of like I couldn't give it the time and attention mm -hmm. since I took on this role with Nirvana. Um, and so I was ready to, to let that go. And basically not feel guilty about <laughs> give it time and attention. I mean, I continue to stay active in the Facebook mm -hmm. group because that was really important to me. Um, but it, to, and I actually just left the group today. Oh my. Crucial. Um, and I, you know, I think I will miss that, but I, I still get, you know, I, I'm active in some other groups. Mm -hmm. so I think I'll get that. And saying that when, when, when it does launch, you're going to be into this new community and, and be able to really share and help the moms like you wanted to do. So, yeah. well, my, my role will primarily be supervisory. Mm -hmm. My official title is, I have to chuckle every time, I <laughs> chief lactation officer. <laughs> but so I'll be supervising all the, um, all the lactation consultants that we have on board. And they're the ones who will actually be getting to do the you know, the groups and mm -hmm. things like that. So how do y'all connect with the lactation specialist? Do you reach out to them yourself or like, did you have a few in mind and that, or did the company have a few in mind that they wanted to connect with? No, we, we launched our site. Mm -hmm. um, really, it was just two pages. It was like, this is what we're going to do. And we're hiring. And we advertised on um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, um, Indeed, I advertised in some of the professional groups and I mentioned it in a Facebook group of lactation consultants I'm in. And it, it was the kind of thing where I was sitting there at my computer and I thought, this is ridiculous. It's gonna take time. I'm gonna go work out. And then I came back an hour later and I literally had 14 applications. Oh, wow. Um, and when all was said and done, and, I, and then I said, mm -hmm. I mean, when I got like 50, I stopped. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so I stopped advertising on all those places. So, I mean, that was exciting too, is that lactation consultants are just incredibly enthusiastic about the idea. So I feel like they, they're probably thinking the same as long as you is there needs to be more resources. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And be able to reach those moms mm -hmm. who, you know, I mean, I just, I think of all the different scenarios, you know, the mom who lives in rural America where, you know, she, like I said, she doesn't have anybody, or maybe there's only one or two in her community and, and she doesn't, you know, didn't click with them. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, with COVID, a lot of people didn't want to go out. They didn't want to take their baby to a hospital or, some stranger's house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I live in Colorado and 
when I was, I remember when I was interviewing lactation consultants, you know, there were days where it was snowing and icy and, you know, what mom wants to take her newborn out in weather like that? Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. Actually, um, I live in very rural, um, I'm in South Carolina, but our, I am 30 minutes away from our pediatrician. And that's the same place where the pediatrician is, is where they had their breastfeeding resource. And then as soon as COVID hit, because I actually had my son right as COVID was starting, um, they shut down their breastfeeding resource. Um, If I needed help, I was supposed to call the pediatrician and they could give me, help me with, with what they could. And even our pediatricians after hours calls got shut down as well. Um, They were like going through a third party program and they no longer offered it. So pretty much as soon as COVID hit and until now, like they still have not reopened any of it. There is no additional resources. It is, you can call the pediatrician during their hours and hope that the nurse answers and hope that you don't have a busy day or you can go online and try and figure it out yourself. So I think this is extremely cool. And actually that's one of the reasons I wanted, wanted to do this interview is because I felt that that resource was so important and hopefully I it's it's a small it's a small community for me right now but if it helps 10 moms I call it a success oh for sure Mm -hmm. for sure and I think even if I get two being asked to or being told to ask your pediatrician most pediatricians have very little knowledge about breastfeeding um you know when they're in medical school do you know how much education they get about breastfeeding no about an hour to an hour and a half lecture. And it comes in their, in, in their coursework where, because one of the things I did when I worked in the hospital is medical students would come shadow me um, because the uh, University of Colorado, they had a specific um, breastfeeding elective. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just following people around. There was no didactic to it. And so I asked them and they were like, yeah, we get about an hour to an hour and a half. And a lot of people don't even attend it, you know, cause if you're, if you know you're going into orthopedics and you, you know, you're thinking, what do I need that for? So unless a physician makes an effort to really educate themselves about breastfeeding, you know, they're, that's all they're going to get. And, you know, what they, they don't have, usually their, their residencies don't have a lot about it. So, you know, when they say, ask your pediatrician. <laughs> I'm relying on that, that hour of time. <laughs> then I, I feel like I got to win because my, my pediatrician has four kids. So at least she could help me with her experience, but the experience only goes so far. Everybody's different. Everybody's yeah. kids are going to, everybody's baby's going to eat differently. That is the truth. I mean, I had three children and breastfed them all. Um, but I, you know, I didn't have a lot of problems. And I was like, this is easy. What's the big deal? And then when I became a lactation consultant and got exposed to, you know, all the different problems and challenges, I was like, oh, I get it now. I, you know, I get it when moms are like, this is so hard. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um even when uh, I've been talking to my, my close friends, I'm like, wow, our experiences are so different. Even between my first and my second, I was like, this is crazy. My first, he dropped, he dropped breastfeeding at 10 months and he was done. He, he just, one day he was like, I don't really feel it anymore. I want the food. I want the real food. And he was, he was down. I was like, all right, I'm not going to force you. You can do what you need to do. I need a break anyways. My second one, she will not take a bottle and hasn't taken a bottle until probably the past month. And that was even just being pumped milk. Um, she was very attached and it, w- it was a great experience, but it was also a new experience because I hadn't had that baby who would be on me 24 seven, because that's a whole another aspect, you know, having a baby who doesn't want to be fed by anybody else. That's, and that's a challenge, you know, we think about the baby who refuses the breast as being really challenging, but you know, the mom who can't get a break because her baby won't take anything else. That's a huge challenge. Yeah. You lose that privilege of, you know, if you do have someone to help you at night, you can't just get them up and say, Hey, can you, you know, take the shift tonight out so I can get asleep and then we can go back to how we normally do tomorrow. Cause I, I, I know my daughter personally would literally just flail and would try and get out of my husband's arms and he would just have to hand her over because she was just flailing 
it didn't matter if he took her out the room and tried to give her a bottle, you know, took her away from me where I wasn't even in sight and it would be breast milk in the bottle. It just, it wouldn't work out. And I didn't have the heart to try and push her any further. I was like, girl, just come here. I'll, I'm, I can wake up every three hours. This is fine. <laughs> and which we didn't get past that part until a month ago as well, when she started taking the bottle. So I think, I think this is going to be really cool. And I do hope that when the program is live that you reach out to me so I can also share about that because I think that would be awesome um but thank you so much for being here and just in talking to me I think this was a really cool chat to have well thank you for for inviting me I'm excited you know for as many moms as possible to hear about this and um when this when this launch when you brought a uh, what, what what's it called with a podcast? I, <laughs> oh, I want to say posting, but since I'm new to podcasting as well, this is all new to me too. Um, my I was recording the other day, and my husband said it's called this, not this, and I'm like, <laughs> it's the same to me. <laughs> he said, if you're gonna do this, you need to know. I said you're probably right. You're probably right. I would love to share it um, in as many different ways as I can. Absolutely. Um, so I will let you know about that. And maybe once y'all have it all launched and you've kind of reached out and have everything built out, you can come back and tell us a little about how it's going. That would be awesome. I'd love that. Thank you. Absolutely. But everything that we talked about today is also going to be in our description. I will put this on the blog. So if you want to read a better rundown, or maybe you want to sign up on their wait list, or if you're listening to this afterwards, um, just join their program or access the free resources that they're also going to have. Um, we will have all of that linked as well. But thank you for listening today. And I can't wait to talk to you again. And yeah, so.